what we are about to receive, may the Lord make us truly thankful. Could hear us if I asked you 
Mrs. Sabri. We may consider taking on this boy to help in the shop. Dear me, he's very small. Yes, he is a bit small, Mrs. Sabri, but he'll grow, he'll grow. I dare say we're on our drink and our victuals. They're all the same, these workhouse boys. They cost more to keep than what they were. Still, you men always think you know best. What are you going to do with him? Well, there's an expression of melancholy on his face, which is rather interesting. He'd make a delightful coffin follower. A what? Uh, not a, co a regular coffin follower to follow grown-ups, but only for the children's practice. It would be nice to have a follower in proportion, my sweet. A delightful effect the more I think of it. For once, just for once, you might have a good idea. Very well then, boy. What's your name? Ima. I've missed, Ma. A singular name. Ima, and one of my home choosing. Yours, Mr. Bumble? Mine, Mrs. Sabri. How's that then, Mr. Bumble? His mother came to us, <laughs> destitute. Bought the boy into the world, probably died. Without even leaving a forwarding name or address. Dear, dear. Do you think you could look like that gentleman up there then, Oliver? Maybe, if I had that hat. Never mind about hats. Oh, the boy's quite right, Henry. Get the boy a top hat. These things must be done proper and correct.
Silly thing. You see, everyone 
leaves him alone. Well, his father left him alone. And his mother left him alone. What? They all leave him alone. Except dear old, kind old Noah. Eh, hey, Charlotte? Oh, hey. you are a one. Workers, how's your mother? You didn't know Mother Alf exists. She's dead. What'd she die of? Shortage of breath? Never you mind. But I do mind. Then you better not say any more, see? Better not. Better not. If you don't mind, the cheek of it. The workhouse cheek of it. My mother Eve says she was a nicer than she was. <laughs> you know, workers, it can't be helped now. And of course, it couldn't be helped then. And I'm very sorry for it and all that. But you must know, workers, your mother was a regular right down bad un. What did you say? A regular right down bad un. That's a good thing she died when she did. What well, she'd be doing hard labour in prison, as like as not. He'll murder me, Charlotte, Mrs. This, this is you boys to murder me. This here voice, Oliver? Yes. And ain't you scared of it, Oliver? Ain't you trembling, even as I speak, Oliver? No. The boy is insane, Mr. Bumble. No boy in half his senses would venture to speak so to you. It's not madness, madam. It's meat. It's hard. Meat, madam. Meat. You've overfed the lad, madam. You've raised an artificial spirit in the boy, hung becoming of his station in life. If you'd fed him on Gruel, none of this would have happened. Dear, dear, this is what comes of being over generous. Yes, indeed. The only thing we can do now, as far as I know, is for me to take him back for a couple of days and starve him down a bit. And I'll feed him on Gruel. Well, the boy comes from a bad family. You're a nice young fellow, ain't you? He called my mother names! And what if he did? You ungrateful little wretch! She probably deserved all that was said and worse! She didn't! She did! It's a lie! <gasps> He's gone. Meat, madam, meat! 
shall have the honor of your intimate acquaintance. Leave him be, leave him be. We're very pleased to see you, Oliver. Very pleased indeed. <laughs> sit. Charlie! No. Get a tub for Oliver to sit on by the fire. Dodger! What? Come here. Take the sausages. Shut up and drink your gin. <laughs> That's right, my dear. Yeah, you sit down there. Ah, <coughs> oh, you're looking at all the handkerchiefs, my dear, aren't you? Yes, well, you see, there are a lot of them. Uh, we just hung them out. Uh, ready for the wash. That's right, ain't it, boys? Ready for the wash. <laughs> <laughs> a little better, don't it, boys? Yeah. Yes, you see, Oliver. In this life, a one thing counts. In the bank, large amounts. I'm afraid these don't grow on trees. You've got to pick a pocket or two. You've got to pick a pocket or two, boy. You got to pick a pocket or two. That's right. Shall we show him how it's done, my merry men? Yeah. yeah. Charlie, go and get the box. Dodger, you see if you can find the key. <laughs> There's the keys of the crook. <laughs> right. What have we got? Get back. Get back. What have we got in our box? We have got the silk handkerchief. And where does the silk handkerchief go?
pick a pocket or two. You've got to pick a pocket or two.
despising you now. But can I help you? I mean, after all, this is my one little pleasure before the boys are awake. A quick cup of coffee. And a counter. This is all I've got for me old age. Who's going to look after me in me old age? Would you, Dodger? Would you? You! What are you doing awake? Quick, speak! What did you see? I couldn't sleep anymore, sir. I'm sorry if I disturbed you. Was you awake five minutes ago? No, sir. Two minutes ago? Be sure, be sure. All right, I'm sure. All right then. If you're sure, then I'm sure. Of course, I know all along that you wasn't awake, Oliver. I'm just trying to frighten you. You're a very brave boy. Did you, uh, perchance, happen to see any of those pretty things? Yes, sir. Well, they're mine, Oliver. They're all I've got for my old age. Terrible thing, it's old age. Do you think you're going to get up now, sir? Certainly, my dear, certainly. There's a bowl of water over there. Go and have a wash. But I had a wash yesterday. <coughs> Today is your birthday. Now go and wash. Bloody slam! Wake up, boy! It's Nancy! The ladies are here! Ah, oh, we'll have a little lesson back if you don't mind, baby! Right, where's the gin? Oh, all in moderation, my dear, all in moderation! Too much gin can be a dangerous thing for a pure young girl. Oh, what's wrong with a bit of danger, Mr Fagin, eh? That's the only excitement around here. And who would deny that small pleasure? Would you?
my dear. Mr. Oliver Twist Esquire. Charm to meet you. Oh, yes. We're all ladies and gentlemen here. We're all quality, aren't we? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Quality? Yeah, but neither meaning of the word, none of you. Ah, except Dodge, of course. Hey, Dodge, you seen the way them quality gentlemen treats their ladies? Of course I have. Right, shall we show them how it's done? Right, yo. Yeah, come on, Nancy, give us a wee show on the stage. All right, all right. Yeah. All right.
nobody mentions my name. Rich men, hold their five pound notes out, saves me. Empty their coats out, they know. I could tear their throats out just to live up to my name. With me, Terry.
you wish, dear boy, if you wish. But here's the doctor to see you. You are a great deal better, are you not? Yes, thank you, sir. Yes, I know you are. You're hungry too, aren't you? No, sir. No, you're not. He's not hungry, Mrs. Betwin. You do feel sleepy, don't you? No, sir. Just as I expected. Not thirsty, are you? If that boy is thirsty, I'll eat my head. Are you? Yes, sir. Rather thirsty. It's quite natural he should, should be thirsty. <laughs> Make him a little tea. Do you have the goodness? You'll be pleased to be up, Oliver. Doctor, do you notice a striking similarity between <coughs> that boy's face and the portrait of my daughter Agnes? Can't say I do, sir. I only know two, two sorts of boys. Mealy-faced boys and beef-faced boys. And which one is Oliver? Mealy-faced, sir. Where does he come from? Oh, didn't I tell you? He was arrested for stealing my pocket handkerchief. What, sir? Oh, it was all a mistake. And when the shopkeeper told us what really happened and he was released by the magistrate, well, I brought him here to make what amends I could. But I must confess, I feel strangely attached to the child. Please, let me see you, my good friend. It's not just good people that have fevers. Bad people have fevers sometimes as well, haven't they? He stole your pocket handkerchief, so he'll steal again some. No, but he, he didn't, you see. Yes, what is it? Ah, yes. Thank you very much. I have some more books over here. Hey, just a minute. Wait a minute. Hey, come back. Come back. Oh, dear. He's gone. And I did wish to have these books returned today. Sent off a bit. He'll be sure to return, sir. And if he does, I'll eat my head. Just do let me take them for you, please, sir. Oh, well, well, yes. If, if you wish, you may. Now, this is what I want you to do. I want you to take these books <coughs> and say you've come to pay the four pounds ten shillings that Mr. Brownlow owes. Now, here's five pounds. Now, there's no need to rush, for it's just down the road. But I shall expect you back in ten minutes. Very good, sir. Bye, Mrs. Bedwin. We shall see you in ten minutes. <laughs> Before you break your mum. 
That is. I'll take the boy back again. Come on, hand over. This is hardly fair, Bill. Are you? Fair or not fair? Hand over, I tell you. Hardly fair, is it, Nancy? Do you think Nancy and me's got nothing else to do with our precious time but to spend it chasing off the young kids? Give it here, you avaricious old skeleton. Give it here. That's for our share of the trouble. And not half enough, neither. Here, start a library. Tell him about us. Nothing. Nothing. Well, that remains to be seen. But if we found out you said anything, anything out of place, make it not wait till that young scoundrel's told you everything. Stand up at me or I'll spit your head against the wall. I don't care for that, Bill. The child shall be armed unless you kill me first. Shall be. I'll soon do that if you don't keep off. It's all right, Bill. We've got him. We've got him. Now, what's the matter? The girl's gone mad, I think. No, she hasn't, Fagin. I don't think it. Then keep quiet, will you? No, I will not keep quiet. All this violence. Try and run away, would you? I shall stand by and see it done, Bill. You've got him here. What more do you want? Let him be. Or I shall put my mark on someone and not care for the consequence. Nancy, Nancy. Oh, you're wonderful today. Such talent. <laughs>
I'm a bit to do as you are told. Watch out! Bill has got an art of gold. Get out! Better on the not to mess with it, better Shut make it the best of it. It's a boy! Look after her, Bill. Look after him, Dodger! Go on, get up. Go on. Look after yourselves! As a day, joking apart. As a day, and now I'd be the last one to say that I wasn't a saint. I'm finding it really quite hard to be black as they hang. Don't care what they have got for me. 
But who will change the plot for me? I think I better think it out again. Hey! Married. And two weeks ago tomorrow it was done. And it seems like an age. Do you know? I went for six teaspoons, a pair of sugar tongs, a milk jug, small assault for second hand furniture, and 20 pounds cash. I went very reasonable. Cheap. Dirt cheap. Oh, I 
information about the boy, Oliver Twist. I have come in haunts to your advertisement, sir. Bumble is the name, beadle of the workhouse where the young man was cared for. Before he was apprentice to an undertaker's, from where he ran away from, sir. Yes, yes, but do you know where the boy is now? Not no more than anybody, sir. But well, what do you know about him? Little truth, sir. What the boy's dying mother gave my dear wife before she passed away. That is the uh, boy's dying mother, not no, much. No, no. Well, Mrs. Bumble has kept it all these yards. And you say that when he left the workhouse, he went to an undertaker's? Yes, sir. Mr. Sarbury, the undertaker, paid us five pounds for Oliver. You mean to say you sold him just like an animal? Well, sir, uh, it was Mrs. Bumble what actually authorised the sale, sir. Really? Then I shall see to it that neither of you is ever employed in a position of trust again. You may leave my house, sir. Oh, I hope, sir, that this unfortunate little circumstance will not deprive me of my parochial office, sir. Indeed it will, and you may think yourself fortunate besides. Mrs. Bumble, sir, she would do it. That is no excuse. You were there on the occasion when the boy was sold, and, uh, and of the two, you are the more in the eyes of the law, uh, and the, the law supposes that your wife acts under your direction. If the law supposes that, sir, then the law is an ass. If that is the eye of the law, sir, then the law is a bachelor. And the worst I can hope for it, sir, is that his high is opened by experience, sir. By experience. It's all right. I'll see, I'll see. <coughs> oh, Mr. Brown, there's a young person at the back door inquiring of you, and uh, it's all she's come about. Oliver. Mrs. Bedwin, you see this locket? Yes. Do you see who it is? Miss Agnes, sir. Yes, my daughter Agnes. And I've reason to believe that young Oliver is her child. Sir? I can't stay out there a minute longer. If I'd gone away, as many would have done, you'd have been sorry, and not without reason, neither. I'm sorry if anyone's been rude to you. Can I help you in any way? I don't know. Can she be trusted? Yes, why? I'm the girl what took Oliver back to Fagin's on the morning he left this house. You? Me. And I wish now I'd never had a part of it. But the boy asked for you specially. So I thought, but what if I come to you? Yeah, but where is this place, Fagin? Oh, that I can't tell you. Do you know that perhaps young Oliver is probably my grandchild? I didn't know nothing. All I knew was my orders. And I had to carry them out or suffer for it. You don't believe me. Oh, look, I don't want your pity. Just wanted you to know that Oliver is safe. I must go back now quickly. No, 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 sorry. Just next day. What can I do about all this? Why must you go back? What's the reason you can't tell me where he is now? Why must you return to these people? I can call the Bow Street runner in a moment. But if you tell them what you told me, they'll see you come to no harm. Oh, don't you understand? I want to go back. I must go back there. Oh, how can I explain? Look, back there is a man that I just can't leave. You see, I love him. Oh, you don't know what it's like to love someone like that. Oh, I understand, my dear. Oh, I do understand you. Excuse me, dear ladies, but I'm most anxious to find out about young Oliver. Please, won't you help me? Very well. I'll bring him to you. Oh, not here. That's too dangerous. <coughs> Will you promise I won't be watched or followed? I promise you solemnly. You can trust him, do you can? Very well, then. Tonight, between 11 and the time the clock strikes 12, I will walk on London Bridge and I will bring Oliver.
o'clock and all's well.
operatic for doing it next year, Rob. <laughs> now, as you will appreciate, Saturday night, there's one or two things I've got to mention. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being a marvellous audience. We've had three...
actually would never have taken place. And I know how much work has gone into it.
seconds on the side and then you're off.
效果。
hope that obviously you enjoyed the races on the field. May I introduce you to Graham Clark Collier, who for several years was the police liaison officer for the schools in this area. Uh, Mr Collier will be presenting the prizes this afternoon. Jump form five. First, Katerina Studinger. Second, Matthew De Kane. Third, Joanna Dines. Race three, high jump form four G. First, Robert McLaren. Second, Daniel Amato. Third, Christopher Elms. Race four, high jump. Race four, high jump for four B. First, Ravish Patel. Second, Alex Keir. Third, Jonathan Drew. High jump form 3S, first Jonathan Brown, second Daniel Shaw, third Matthew Lee. High jump 3A, first Jenny Groves, second Michelle Everett, third Jack Poulton. Seven hurdles form six. First Matthew Brown, second Jonathan Stent, third Victoria Spicer. Form 3A, first Jenny Groves, second Michelle Everett, third Jack Poulton. <laughs> Race 9, hurdles 4G, first Mark Stock. Second, Katie Chapman. Third, Ryan Morant. <laughs> Race 10, hurdles 3S. First, Jonathan Brown. Second, Daniel Shaw. Third, Matthew Lee.
Place 11, hurdles 4B, first Ravish Patel, second Jonathan Phillips, third Thomas Green. <laughs> Race 12, hurdles form 5, first Ben Chapman, second Stuart Proudfoot, third Ryan Smith. Race 13, flat race form 3A. First Andrew Hartigan, second Jenny Groves, third Jack Poulton. Race 14, sack race, form 6, first came Barry, second Francesca Amato, third Victoria Spicer. Second, Sarah White. Third, Edward Peck. Two, 
flat trace form 3s first jonathan brown second james crudson third daniel shaw Samantha Collins, third Mark Scott. Race 31, Egan Spoon, 1R, first Matthew Hartigan, second Matthew Hood, third Michael McPherson. Flat trace form 2, 
Martin, first Louise Martin, second Christopher Painter, third Michael George. Race 33, sack race 3A. First, Andrew Hartigan. Second, Emily Knight. Third, Michelle Everett. Race 34, flat race form 6. First, Matthew Brown. Second, Terry Collins. Third, Victoria Spicer. Junior champ. 
champion is Ian Vigras in KG.
but Nelson were 3,600 at five. For Drake, 3,646, but the shield this time goes to Rally with 3,869. <laughs> that represents over 10,000 stars which must be at least, at least 5,000 pieces of work marked by the staff to award those stars. An incredible amount that everybody gets through, children and staff included. Well done, staff. <laughs> the examination shield, the Taylor examination shield, with a bursary to Bishop Stalkford and scholarships to Brentford and St. Joseph, Simon Driver. The Shield of Endeavour is my prize. I get to say who has this one. It's for somebody that I want to encourage. It's for somebody that I think can do more. Sometimes quite a lot more. But I want that extra bit. It has always worked for me in the past. I want it to work again this year. This year it goes to Jonathan Wilson. until you drop. <laughs> Caroline Higgins. <laughs> the English trophy, the one most parents like because at least it has a use, you can put flowers in it. And that goes to Victoria Spicer. The Everett Open Essay Competition, open to children in Form 4 and above. Sign the driver. You will know that once again we've had an exchange with the Lycée in France. Our grateful thanks to Mrs. Kempen for taking once again the trip out to France. If we're to do it next year, I suspect it will not be Mrs. Kempen, though I thought not. If you would like to chaperone the children to France when they go, then please let us know. Secondly, if you would like to have a child when they come here, or one of the adults, please let us know. The French Cup this year goes to Victoria Spicer. Science Cup, Simon Driver. If 
size for anything to go by, the computer cup would be the best one to have. This year it goes to Natalie Villeneuve. History Cup, getting all through battered now, but nevertheless a lovely cup, Cardinal Patel. <laughs> the Geography Cup, Cardinal Patel. <laughs> Design and Technology, an award given to us by Barclays Bank, goes to Georgina J. Mm -hmm. Scripture Shield to Simon Driver. Kane Berry. <clears throat> Art in Form 6 to Francesca Amato. Drama Cup. What most parents won't know is the number of times during the last week of term when children were going sick on us um, and then coming back again, which was very unreasonable of them, because one poor child had to constantly alter the dance, the speaking, and she did it all without even thinking about it. She changed in and out of parts with no trouble at all. Thoroughly deserved Cardinal Patel. The dance trophy, the Anna and Emma Wright dance trophy to Laura Kempen. Some years, unfortunately, it does seem a parade of the same children. Staff say to me, please could you just mention, and could you tell me, could you say to the parents that it was so close between these two? And the answer is no, I can't. It's not fair to the second one, really, to know that they were that close. We may do that outside, but on an occasion like this, yes, it was just very close. For effort in project, Cardinal Patel. For effort in class, Cardinal Patel. <laughs> she really has had a lovely year this year. The poetry she was <clears throat> Victoria Spicer. Handwriting, the one that nobody seems to deserve, but in this case does Terry Collins. <laughs> Almost 
Last year it's nearly tea time. The Robin Shield for the most improved reader. Reading, you know, is the most vital skill that we can acquire. If you can't read, you can't do anything. And it's through reading that we get enormous amounts of pleasure. You are responsible for clothing the characters, not, as you so often see, the television, where you look at the character and there it is fully formed and evermore shall be so. With reading, it is you that's getting the pleasure and the pleasure is enormous. And the Robin Shield for improved reading in the lower school goes to Gemma Drake. for continuous effort in class goes to Nicola J. stunning some of it. And the Jonathan Cove Cup for Art in Form 5, very fiercely contested, but goes to Stuart Proudfoot. <laughs> the Chess Shield, top of the league, is Game Berry. Most improved. I didn't read my writing. <laughs> oh, the most improved chess player, Victoria Spicer. <laughs> Mrs. Fraser's Chess Club on a Tuesday. Tuesday is to be recommended. Do encourage your children. It's fun too. Citizenship Cup. Again, a vital cup, one which has to be earned and for which we watch throughout the year. But a most important attitude to life citizenship, and this year goes to Laura Kempner. Not only a good athlete, but a good citizen as well, the boys won Matthew Brown. The Norton Trophy. Really for hard work, attainment, <coughs> basically something that's just done very well and it should be recognised goes to Jonathan Grove. <laughs> Jumping a year is hard. It's hard for the children and of course puts a lot of extra work on the staff. 
but catching up the gaps that you have made is really tough. And so we like to recognise it where we can. And this year the Nicholas Jobson Award is given to Alex Beer. Richard Jolly Reading Award, Gregory Speller. I now have a name for the most improved senior footballer, and it's Kane Berry. <laughs> Finally, the Headmaster's Prize. So difficult this year, so difficult. And you've seen by the range of awards that a lot of children were very much in contention. But I think without doubt, Matthew Brown. Association Shields for, first of all, for KG. Parents Association Shields are for the child who perhaps isn't going to get everything, although sometimes it does happen that way, but that is trying, working for it, really out there doing their best, has always got their gear, even if they're not an academic. A whole range of things like that. Kindergarten, Sarah Taylor. Can I point out to you the rather nice centres which the Parents Association have had done for us with their own little badge in the middle of the shield. Please may I have these shields returned on Monday. Form 1H, Daniel Vinicum.
B, Robert Clark. James McClellan. <laughs> Form 5, Katerina Studinger. monitors, library books, great many library books, a lot of nursery equipment, and that's just to name a few. They have done very, very well, they've worked very hard, so thank you very much from all of us. Video films are available on order. Order. You mean on order? If you would like video films, there's the man standing there. Right, we have something very special now for Mr. Collier. very grateful to Mr. Collier for standing in. Most parents won't know, and he obviously is aware, that we were to have Michael Ricketts, who's the director of ISIS East Anglia. And a day or so ago, he phoned to say, I'm sorry, I've slipped my disc, and I cannot drive 200 miles and then stand presenting prizes. Graham Collier stood in for us at the last moment, but I'd like to read you this letter from Michael Ricketts. Dear Russell and Janice, I loathe having to let people down, and I'm afraid it was the only course I could take on this occasion. I've had to cancel everything else this week, and I'm not too sure about next week. Send my apologies to you and the staff and parents. If it is suitable, you might like to mention that I send my congratulations to all the prize winners, and I don't forget the other children who have worked hard but are not prize winners on this occasion, but may well be so in the future. Mr. Nexbeth. <laughs> I remember you told me on the phone that you were ordering 1,600 cream cakes. That means that you had set aside a ration for my wife and I. And I would therefore like to bequeath those to the youngest boy and girl in the school. <laughs> Which I think is rather nice. So, 
I'll leave Mrs. Dines to sort that one out. Our thanks to Mr. Spence, who has been producing the programme more times than we all care to think about with these change of guests of honour. Finally, we have another presentation to Mr. Collier from the collection which was taken up in the school. Victoria and Kate, would you both like to go there? Please would you open it now. There is a card on the top from Charmaine. Where are you, Charmaine? Wave. There she is. <coughs> Thank you, Charmaine. <coughs> she says, I appreciate you coming to talk to us. Best wishes. I like you from Charmaine. Sarah Orway Jones. <laughs> I am in 3S. I am in 3S. <laughs> much I have enjoyed this afternoon. It's always nice to sit in the sun and watch other people exert themselves. But it's even nicer when I'm among friends, all with young faces here. And there's one thing that I shall miss in my retirement, is seeing all these happy young faces at people. Thank you very, very much indeed. This will have served to help me remember, not that I need much to be reminded, remember the happy times that I have had Mr. Green and all the children and the staff especially at Heathcote School. 